Kuffer represents faith. This represents the understanding of God's instructions, that God's instructions are for our benefit. Faith refers to trust in something. From Revelation 1.15, and his, or Jesus' feet, which represent dominion, were likened to fine brass or faith, as if they had been burned or tormented in a furnace or trial. From Job 28.2, brass or faith is molten out of the stone or doctrine. Silver represents hope. It is the understanding of redemption. From 2 Corinthians 10.15, not boasting of things without our measure, that is of other men's labors, but having hope, when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. From Psalms 12.6, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver, or hope, tried in a furnace, which means trial, of earth, or transgression, purified seven times. From Jeremiah 6.30, reprobate silver shall men call them, because the Lord has rejected them. From Galatians 5.5, 5, For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Gold represents charity. It is the understanding of salvation. From 1 Peter 1.7, That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire or desire, might be found to the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. From 1 Corinthians 13.13 13, And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Gold itself is a unique color, and is impossible to create by mixing any of the colors of the rainbow spectrum. Gold resists attacks by individual acids and does not rust. Gold occurs in rock, or law. It appears most often as a metal-solid solution of gold with silver, i.e. a gold-silver alloy. Fool's gold occurs in coal and is comprised of iron and sulfur. Iron represents dissimulation, refers to concealing the truth. Dissimulation prevents free exchange of ideas and information. From Daniel 2.43 But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay or obedience. From Romans 12.9 Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. From Job 28.2 Iron is taken out of the earth, or transgression and brass, or faith, is molten out of the stone, or doctrine. From 1 Timothy 4.2, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. From Deuteronomy 28.23, And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, or faith, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Iron makes chains. From Deuteronomy 28.48 And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, neck meaning loyalty, until he has destroyed thee. From Galatians 2.13 And the other Jews disassembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. From Joshua 8.31 as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of whole stones, or doctrines, over which no man has lift up any iron or dissimulation. The word irony, or ironic, comes from the meaning dissimulation, to act out of ignorance of some portion of the truth, characterized by what is expected and what actually is. Madness, an ironic fate for such a clear thinker, it was ironical that the well-planned scheme failed so completely. Rust represents delusion. 
As air or spirit combines with the iron or dissimilation, electrons are liberated. The metal is swept away and converted into iron oxide, which is this iron and oxygen, which means dissimilating spirit in the form of rust or delusion. Water and especially salt water or sorrowful soul speeds up the rusting process. Rust is the oxidization of iron only. Other metals do not rust, only iron or dissimilation. Only dissimilation causes delusion. From Matthew 6, 90. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where the moth and the rust does corrupt. From Jeremiah 6.28 They are all grievous revolters, walking with slanderers. They are brass and iron. They are all corruptors. A blacksmith represents a deceiver. Mr. Smith or Agent Smith might ring a bell. The term blacksmith comes from the activity of forging iron or the black metal, so named due to the color of the metal after it has been heated in fire. The iron is shaped when it is hot and pliable. When it cools and hardens, the opportunity is lost. From Isaiah 44.12, the smith with the tongues both worketh in the coals, which means selfish life, and fashioneth it with hammers, and worketh it with the strength of his arms, or rule. Ye he is hungry, and his strength faileth, he drinketh no water, or soul, and is faint. Lead represents cruelty. Lead is a main group element, or the heaviest element, in the carbon, or selfishness group. From Zechariah 5.8 This is wickedness, and he cast it into the midst of Ephraim, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. From Jeremiah 6.29, The bellows are burned, the lead is consumed out of the fire, the founder mounteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. From Job 19.24, That they were graven with an iron pen, and lead in the rock, O Lord, for ever. Wood represents life. Dead wood represents soulless life, as it is wood lacking water, or soul. A tree represents a family, a family tree. From Ecclesiastes 2.6, I made me pools of water, to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. Coals represent selfish life. Coal is fuel for fire, or a selfish life is to be desired. From Proverbs 26.21 As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The coals thereof are coals of fire, or desire. Their face is blacker, or impurer, than coal. Coal is comprised primarily of carbon along with other elements, chiefly hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, and nitrogen. Coal begins as layers of rotten wood, or soulless life, lying under dirt, or transgression. Under this compression, the plant material is metamorphosed into coal. Coal fire represents desire of a selfish life. Dead wood fire, or rotten wood fire, represents a desire of a soulless life. Coal burns hotter than wood. Fire requires air or spirit to burn. From Romans 12.20 Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in doing so, thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head.